Hey, good morning everybody. Glad y'all have joined us. My name is Pastor Carl. Uh, I'm the lead student pastor here at New Hope Church. And so thank you for joining us for our 8 a.m. Devo on this Friday morning. Uh, where are you watching from? Leave it in the comments below. Uh, love getting to see where everybody's watching from. And we come together, right? It's all over the Houston area, all over Texas, all over the United States, uh, and even, even globally. Um, curious, who's, who's watching from the farthest away right now? Who's I know we've had people watching from all over the world at times, and so it's absolutely incredible just to see uh, us come together as a New Hope Church family uh, for these 8 a.m. Devos. Uh, I love getting to start my day with y'all. Uh, each morning, getting on there and uh, enjoy Romans as Pastor Tim and the other pastors uh, lead us through. And if you're new, maybe someone invited you and, or you're, ch you're catching up on demand, I just wanna say we're just going through the book of Romans, right? Verse by verse. Uh, and what makes this special, though, is you, you watching right now, um, taking time to join us, to welcome people, uh, to pray for folks who need prayer. Uh, that's what it's all about. And that's honestly what makes these devos awesome. So keep it up. Uh, keep inviting people to join us. Uh, if you're watching on demand later, so maybe you're catching up on YouTube. I mean, I want to encourage you, if you can, join us live 8 a.m. each morning. Uh, we're there and you can be commenting and, and all that kind of stuff. It's powerful. Also, parents, uh, it's not too late uh, to go wake up your kids. So go, go wake them up. I'll give, you, I'll, give you, I'll give you time. Go wake them up, grab them out of bed, throw some water on them, and have them come join you uh, for the 8 a.m. Devo right now because I think there's power um, in us doing this together as a family. Okay? And so we're going to jump into our text today from Romans chapter 13. So yesterday, uh, Pastor Howard did an incredible job starting us off with Romans chapter 13. It's a powerful and honestly very timely section of scripture. One, about honoring our governing, governing officials, and two, uh, submitting to their authority. Uh, it's great stuff from Pastor Howard, and I would encourage you to go check that out. Today, what we're doing is we're going to continue kind of on that same vein that he started with verse 8. So. Go ahead and grab your Bible if you have one. Go grab one. And uh, we're going to be starting today uh, from verse 8. So I'll pull it up here. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Now, Howard hit on this more yesterday, but we're called as believers. If you know Jesus today as your Lord and Savior, we're called as believers to live to a higher standard, right? Um, and, and really, we're supposed to be people that pay what we owe, right? If we owe a debt, we're supposed to pay it. And it shows Jesus to people that we're going to be people of our word, we're going to be people of integrity and pay what we owe. Now, uh, I know this is a lot of times easier said than done. Uh, we've had two babies now, and man, the bills, especially medical bills, they can be uh, one, they can be really expensive. Two, they can be really confusing because you get different bills and from different places and you don't know and sometimes insurance is taken and sometimes it hasn't and, and you don't want to get ripped off at the same time and so I get it, right? But here's my encouragement for you if maybe if you're struggling, right? You got a lot of bills and you're just trying to figure out uh, how to do the right thing, how to honor the Lord and be wise at the same time um, is just do what needs to be done, right? Seek the Lord, ask for wisdom, ask for guidance, do your research 
And then if you find something that you owe someone, if you're in debt to somebody, then do what needs to be done so that we can honor the Lord in that. And uh, it says in the scripture that there's one debt that we will always have. Uh, And the one debt that we're always supposed to carry around is the debt to love one another. Not just those who deserve it, everyone. Now you may be struggling, right? Like, well, yeah, I can love most people, but there's this one person, this person, right? Fill in the blank. I can't love them. Uh, Well, I wanna remind you from an earlier Devo that we had uh, from Romans chapter five or six through eight. I wanted to read it to you because I feel like it kind of uh, fit to what we're talking about here. It says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. Here it is. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for who, church? Us. Why do we love? Because he first loved us. Even when it's hard, we're called to take the high road. Now, let's go back uh, to Romans chapter 13, verse 8. I want to reread verse 8 for us, right? It says this. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. Whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Now, at the end of that scripture in verse 8, it says whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. And then he expands on that in verse 9. So let's pick that up in verse 9. It says the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, and you shall not steal, you shall not covet. Now, side note. Uh, quoting other verses, you'll notice a lot of times, especially in the New Testament, you'll see it a lot in Romans, um, where Old Testament verses, and sometimes New Testament, but Old Testament verses are being quoted in the New Testament. Uh, and something that I do, uh, you don't have to do this, but it's something what I do. Anytime I see a New Testament verse, or really anytime I'm reading and there's a verse quoted from somewhere else in the Bible, what I do is I go find it, and normally it's you know, italicized at the bottom, they have a little number, you know, italicized at the bottom of your Bible. I'll go find it, I'll go underline it in its, wherever it was originally uh, spoken at, I'll underline it, and then I'll write the, the other location that it's being said. So, for example, uh, these are being quoted um, from Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5. So what I do is I go to Exodus 20, and I go to Deuteronomy 5, and I underline what's it set, where those verses are, and then I'll write Romans 13 right there. So that way, next time I'm reading through the Old Testament, I can see uh, the connection to the New Testament and the Old Testament, because it's all connected, right? So when I'm reading through Exodus, now if you look at my Bible, uh, you'll see about 10 or 11 times, because these are pretty commonly quoted scriptures in the New Testament, 10 or 11 times that these Old Testament verses in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5 are being quoted in the New Testament. And so it helps remind me as I read that, hey, everything this, but that the Bible teaches from Genesis all the way to Revelation is all connected. Now, uh, that's just a little tidbit that I do. I want to finish verse 9 and then go into verse 10, if you're good with that. So it says this, finishing verse 9. And what, whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of of the law. Now he's talking about the Old Testament law, and he's quoting Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. I want to read that to you. So in Romans chapter 13, they're quoting Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. It says, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So the entire Jewish law, all 613 of these laws, written over a thousand, over a thousand years ago, can be summed up in this one simple law is to love one another, to love your neighbor. And here's the thing though, only one has truly ever fulfilled it, and that is Jesus. We can't fulfill it. We try, but Jesus did. When we love Jesus with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, it overflows to everyone else. And see, the key with that is it always starts with Jesus is that my job is to love Jesus. And when I love Jesus, it's much easier to love my neighbor. It's much easier to love my coworkers. It's much easier to love those family members that sometimes it's hard to love, right? But the key is it always starts with Jesus. Now, the next section I wanna read 
to us in my NIV Bible, uh, it's the header is labeled, the day is near. So what day are they referring to? Uh, They're referring to the return of Jesus. Not in a manger, uh, not on a cross, but in glory. And he calls those who follow him home. So with that in mind, let's read uh, verse 11. Paul says this. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because your salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. So what does he call us to do? He calls us to wake up. Somebody comment in all caps, wake up. Some of y'all might be falling asleep right now. I know it's early. If you woke your student up, they might be falling asleep. So tell them to wake up too. But he tells us to wake up. Now, Paul is talking to believers here, those, those who know Jesus. And, and is why is he telling believers to wake up? Well, um, the honest thing is, is that some of us are asleep uh, in their relationship with God. Right? They're an autopilot. And here's the thing about sleep, right? You can do a lot of the same things that you can do when you're awake that you can do when you sleep, right? You can sometimes talk in your sleep. You can sometimes walk around in your sleep. You can think in your sleep, right? We call them dreams. But it's always a shell, the shadow of what it could be. And so hear me on this. Someone listening today. Your faith is on autopilot. You're sleepwalking through your faith. It's time to wake up. And you may say, like, I know Jesus, I'm good, right? I, I accepted him, I got my get into to heaven card. Now I can go do whatever I want. No, that's not how it works. See, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that's not the end, that's the beginning. Uh, and Tim talked about it on Sunday, he talked about this idea of sanctification, right? And what is sanctification? It's the ongoing process, day in and day out of following the Lord to look more and more like Jesus to live according to his word, as it says in Psalm 119, right? Our job every day when we know Jesus is to, sh- is to strive to know him more today. Let's check out verse 12. Verse 12 says this. <clears throat> the night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. The day is coming. The return of our Lord is near. Praise Jesus. Come, Lord. So with that in mind, Paul simply asks, are you ready? Are you living a life that honors the Lord? Are you actively growing in your faith? Let me put this way. Do you desire to know Jesus more every day? And here's the thing for me, okay? I'll be be real with y'all. There's people out there Um, that are better teachers than I am, better leaders than I am, better communicators than I will ever be. Um, I'm I'm blessed and humbled that um, the Lord has allowed me to be used in small ways to advance his church, and I am beyond blessed to be a part of this church and what God is doing. I'm blown away. I'm so humbled by the opportunities the Lord has given me and leadership here and everything. I have one goal, though, when when I wake up each day. It's my only goal is I just want to be more like Jesus today than I was yesterday. That's my goal. I want to love Jesus more today than I did yesterday. That's it. What is sanctification? It's I want to look more like Jesus today than I did yesterday, and then more than I did the day before that, and the day before that, and it's an ongoing thing. Are we perfect? No. Am I perfect? No. Is anybody perfect? No. Besides Jesus, right? And so sometimes, though, we say, well, I'm not perfect, so I'm not even going to try. No, that's not how it's going to work for us. We're not perfect. Yeah, we get that. But I'm going to strive every single day to look more like the one who is perfect. And that is Jesus. And I think when you start thinking of your days that way, I don't know, the pressure of life kind of disappears. Your focus uh, shifts from, I don't know, maybe a worldly focus to, man, I just want to be more like Jesus today. One other thing, um, verse 12 mentioned uh, the armor of light, which I just think is an awesome uh, illustration. I wish I could spend more time on it. But that Jesus is the light of the world, and so he is the armor of light. Not only is he protecting us, but he is light. And the thing about light is it always, always 
defeats the darkness. Someone comment amen to that truth. Now, two more verses I want to hit on today. Uh, Verse 13. Let us behave decently as in daytime, not cresting around in drunkenness or sexual morality or debauchery, not dissension and jealousy. Now, you'll see two different verses here in verse 13 and verse 14. Okay, so verse 13 is sin that we need to walk free from. Okay, and so if you're struggling today in sin, um, today's the day that you walk in freedom. It's time to wake up and do what needs to be done to walk in freedom. And if you need help, text prayer to 642-123. You're not alone. We're here for you, for real. Uh, we want to help. And I want you to know this today, if, if you're I'm speaking to someone that may be struggling with sin. The freedom of Christ is always better than the enslavement from sin. The freedom of Christ is always better than the enslavement from sin. Now, verse 14. Rather, okay, so now you kind of see the the difference between verse 13 and 14. 14. Rather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. So it says to clothe with Christ, right? Our full focus is on Jesus. We're not thinking of the sin, right? My full focus is how can I be more like Jesus today? What do I need to do to be more like Jesus, to be a better husband, to be a better father, coworker? What is it? Whatever it may be, how can I be more like Jesus today? And I want to just uh, right here give a few practical if you're struggling with sin on how to focus on Jesus, how to walk in freedom. Okay, three things briefly, okay? One, simple, powerful, Spend time with Jesus every day. Spend time in his word daily. Start your day focusing on his will for your life. Two, memorize battle scriptures. So what are you struggling with, right? Find scripture to fight it. We we have the sword. The sword is the word of God. And so I believe in my life, anytime I'm struggling with something, I got, um, maybe it's anxiety or whatever it may be, I go find scripture and I memorize it. So when I'm in that moment, I'm being tempted. I don't want to just like grin and bear it and try to get through it on my own. I want to quote the word of God, right? It talks about in Hebrews 4.12 that it splits bone and marrow, right? It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. That's what I want to be quoting. I don't want to just be going at it with my own, uh, just my own self-will. I want to quote the word of God. And so Tim mentioned in a sermon, I don't know which one, but he said, whatever you're struggling with, right? Anxiety, anger, doesn't matter, right? If you're struggling with something, all you gotta do is go Google it, say, verses about blank. Google it, and all these verses pop up, find one that stands out to you, and memorize it. Third thing, have accountability. You're not made to fight alone. Have people in your life to help you through whatever you're facing. That may mean you need to be real with some people, be honest. That could be step one. Uh, But have some people that can keep you accountable. Because remember, you're not alone. We as a church family are here for you, no matter what's going on. So again, if you got something going on, you can comment right now and ask for prayer. But also I'd encourage you to text prayer to 642123 so we can continue to follow up with you. Church, thank you so much for joining us. Let's pray uh, together as we get out of here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for today. God, thank you um, for our church family. God, I pray that you would keep our church family safe. Would you bring healing over those who are sick? Uh, Lord, those who have lost income, Lord, would you help make up the difference? And Jesus, there's those struggling with sin. God, I pray they can find freedom. And Lord, it's the freedom that only you can bring. Lord, would you bless them? Would you keep safe? And Jesus, help us every day strive to be more like you. We thank you, Lord. Pray us in Jesus' name. And everybody commented, amen. Love y'all, church family. We'll see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. See y'all.